This morning, new details on how our food supply is giving rise to antibiotic resistance superbugs. Consumer Reports spent three years examining the risk from routinely feeding animals drugs. At least two million Americans get antibiotic resistant infections each year, with 23,000 deaths. Ravashi Rengan is Director of Consumer Safety and Sustainability at Consumer Reports. Ravashi, good morning. Good morning. Okay, first of all, how does this end up, these superbugs, end up in our meat? Traditionally in agriculture here, we feed low levels of antibiotics to healthy animals on a daily basis. And what that does is instead of the antibiotic killing a bacteria like it would in an infection, you're actually teasing the bacteria. And some of those bacteria survive. They mutate to become resistant to those antibiotics and being killed by them. Later on, as the animal breeds that, sheds it, it goes into fertilizer, manures, can contaminate the meat. If we get exposed to those bacteria and get infections, it makes antibiotics more difficult to treat those illnesses when we get them. The more resistant these bugs get, the more difficult they become to treat. And these days, we have 23,000 deaths a year now as a result of antibiotic-resistant infections. So you did some testing to see what, what, how much superbugs were in the meat. What did you find? That's right. In poultry we, and meat. We've looked at a number of different meats, uh, ground beef, shrimp, chicken, and turkey. And we find high rates of superbugs, that is bugs uh, resistant to three or more classes of antibiotics in all of them. Now, we did look at samples that were produced with antibiotics and those produced without. In most cases, you start to see significant differences in the rates of superbugs and other resistant bacteria. So the good news is there are choices on the market that consumers can make, and there are better farming practices that don't use these things. We use antibiotics for growth promotion and yeah. disease prevention. And while that sounds good in farming, mm -hmm. in people, we would never, for example, in schools, give kids low levels of antibiotics every day to promote their growth or prevent disease. It's completely ludicrous we do that yeah. in the animal and, and the problem begins here when they give the antibiotics, the low-level antibiotics, to healthy animals. That's right. The problem is these low levels in healthy animals that essentially tease the bacteria almost to become more resistant to them. As you said. So how do you label against this? So the FDA has some guidelines ahead for the industry to say we can't use medically important human antibiotics for growth promotion, but disease prevention purposes are still allowed. We need more. And we also need farm hygiene and management practices to be implemented. In the meantime, consumers can shop for meat produced without the routine use of antibiotics. Raised without antibiotics is one good claim. Mm -hmm. Organic, certified humane, animal welfare approved, American grass-fed certified, all of these programs are certified label programs with verification that are looking at all of these practices on the farm to make sure we're minimizing drug use routinely in animals and implementing better farm hygiene. So you don't really have to give up a good burger or a filet mignon with Bernay sauce. Just be careful about where you buy it and what's in it. That's, That's right, what, and make sure you cook here. it thoroughly. Okay, got it. And light on the Bernays sauce. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Bernays sauce still available. <laughs> to learn more about which chain restaurants allow antibiotics in their food supply, go to CBSThisMorning.com.